Good morning, everybody, and welcome to what I'm sure will be an interesting day in I Want a Mini Bike. As you'll notice, I am still on top of the lookout tower that I created in the last episode to test and see if Day 7 hordes are a problem. You'll also note that it is Day 13. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Now... In the last episode, if you watch the whole way to the very, very, very end, you'll know that I stuck around until the sun came up, until Mr. Popo turned back on the sun. So imagine my surprise when I log in today, and it's midnight 30 on day 13. Hmm. Something interesting has happened. This server doesn't keep running when nobody's logged in. Time pauses, as we found out. It's the only way that this would work. I mean, if it didn't, I'd be on day, like, 300-something. Because I never turn off the server. Very intentionally, too. Uh, for multiple reasons now. Uh, because I'm trying... I'm testing things with Windows updates and Windows 10, and I'm going the wrong way. I need to go home because I don't have any of my supplies. I figured I'd just take this opportunity to keep exploring, but, you know, I need stuff and crap. So, yes, we have some interestingness happening. Somebody's been on my server. It's the only thing I can think of, unless the server broke. Which I guess wouldn't be too terribly surprising, considering, you know, it is alpha. But uh, it's never happened before in the many, 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 many times that I've played this game before. Uh, I was looking on Steam today. There's a really, really long shadow. Uh, anyways, yeah, I was poking around Steam today, and Seven Days to Die is the second longest time I've played a game in my Steam library. Space Engineers is the f first longest, with like 255 hours or something like that. Uh, Seven Days to Die is 174 hours that I've put into this thing. And not once has a time skipped outside of me shutting down the server and turning back on again. Which I do kind of hope they eventually fix if that is actually a problem and not intended design. And if it is intended design, I hope you change it. Because I don't like that. I really, really don't. But, yes, yeah, so, uh, it's... It's been a little while since I uploaded a video. We've been busy. busy. Pfft, apparently, I've been busy not being able to talk. Um, but we've been busy coding stuff and doing web development. And, uh, you know, there's something that I've come to understand when it comes to web development. You know, all those people when the Android first came out and we started understanding more about, more about what the Android platform was you know, for cell phones. And people started bitching about, you know, how hard it's going to be for developers. It's going to be a fractured market. There are going to be people with different types of hardware and blah 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 Yeah, different hardware, different OS versions, that kind of thing. And iOS was going to be better to program for because it's going to be one platform. Everything's going to be kept updated. Everything's going to be kept consistent. Yeah, they kept up with that particular promise, now didn't they? Um, yeah, so uh, so all those people complaining that it's hard to program for Android because there's a fractured market. I just want to say, be a web developer for a day and then shut the hell up. <laughs> because seriously, all that crap you have to worry about from Android devices, different size screen, different hardware, that kind of thing. We have to work. Web developers have to worry about like five times over. Because not only do we have to worry about the different hardware that's in Android devices, we have to worry about the different hardware that's in the iOS devices, and BlackBerry, and Windows phones, and desktops, and laptops, and tablets, and all that fun crap. Okay, I'm going to take that as a sign to shut the hell up about that. Yeah, that, that was my end of my little rant. Anyways, uh, but yeah, so we've been having a lot of fun with... Uh, JavaScript. I think I mentioned this before. My dad, he's been a programmer since he was like 16. So a very long time. And uh, he's programmed in all kinds of programs. Like uh, basic uh, 
uh, he programmed in binary. Yes, he programs in ones and zeros. Uh, machine language, that kind of thing. He's, he's programmed a lot of different languages in his time. Uh, and, but this is the first, his first foray into JavaScript. And I've been playing with JavaScript for a while now. Uh, a couple years now. I'm not good at it. Mm. He's totally surpassed me in skill in uh, JavaScript. Long time ago, he surpassed me in skill. Well, long time ago, last week. Uh, but he did that fairly quickly because he's been programming for, for so bloody long. Programs are programs. It's just the syntax that are different. Anyways, uh, but his coding is so noticeably different than my coding. I, when I started learning how to code, I didn't have any... Uh, I guess, built-in biases, I guess you can say, from programming in other languages. I never learned basic. I mean, yeah, okay, I did a little bit of programming in QBasic back when I was in uh, junior high, but that doesn't mean crap. Uh, I mean, I poked at QBasic for a year, and that was the stuff I learned out of, my ma out of the back of my math book. Got extra credit for it because I was just poking at it. I was like the only one in the school that had a computer at the time, or at least one of the very, very, very few people people that had a computer at the time. Think about that. I'm not that old, but when I was a teenager, there it was the time when there weren't when people didn't have, you know, not everybody had computers in their pockets. Yeah, so, uh, I'm trying to keep my thoughts straight in my head while I'm actually playing this game. It's shockingly hard. And kind of noticeable, I'm sure. But, uh, that's not what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for! Um, and of course I lost my train of thought again. Crap. I do that a lot, you know that? Sure, it's kind of annoying. Should probably make a, uh, medical chest... But I'm not out of space just yet. Uh, what all do we got? We got uh, plants, plants. Wee! So, what did we do yesterday? Or, pff, yesterday. I can't say yesterday legitimately at all anymore. Now, can I? Because it's not yesterday as in yesterday in the game. It's not yesterday as in yesterday in reality. It's not yesterday in any sense of the word. So what did we do in the last episode? There we go, that's the right word. We figured out that 64 blocks high works when it comes to hiding from the seventh day hordes. Now that's important information because the seven day hordes, I think, can sense further away. And they seem to also be able to pretty much instantly sense where you are. Uh, and Right, we just jumped up and uh, we were just there, right? I think. Yeah, we were there when s the when day seven just started. So yeah, I think that was a proper test. Man, I'm gonna have to go back and look again, aren't I? Hmm. Ooh, I am. Boop. There we go. All right, I want to keep that one here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch some of my episodes because I'm not gonna, I'm not able to keep track of, you know, what the hell happened. Hmm. But uh, anyway, so we learned that day seven hordes don't attack you if you're far enough away, far enough up, I should say. So all we have to do is build high enough up, and we don't have to worry about the day seven hordes at all. Now that's cool. What are you? You are, let's see, uh, bullet protection 28%, bullet protection 16%. Alright, that answers that question. Because the iron armor I made, and it's faulty, but the leather armor I found, and it's flawless. So I was wondering if that was potentially better. It is not. It's better than my cloth armor. <clears throat> fancy cloth armor? Oh, faulty. I thought they said fancy. Ugh. That's what I get for not reading the entire word. 
All right, so it is 8.45. Let's see, where do we want to go? We've pretty much explored there. I think this is where we came from. This is also a big city. Yeah, let's go there. Let's, let's go back there. Oh, I should probably get food before I starve to death. This isn't... This isn't don't starve. This is seven days to die. I'd rather not starve to death. Um, so yeah, we'll go back to the big city. And do a little bit of scouting there. We don't have to worry about uh, time now. At least not as much. Because I have the 64 blocks. And we know that that will suffice to hide from zombies. Though we should probably keep doing that. Keep uh, using the 64 block trick. Just went out in the wild. And see if that's a... Uh, see how accurate that is. You know, thoroughly test it. That kind of thing. Do I need anything else? I should probably take repair stuff. Which I don't have a lot of. I need iron. I need to spend another day just... Uh, you know, mining and crap like that. Going around getting resources. I think I've said this before. I think I've said this many a time. Is that I'm going to spend a day or two and just gather resources. I need lots of iron. Uh, so, yeah. Um, anything else has been happening? Well, I've been coding. Uh, I started playing Mad Max. You know, I mentioned that I got the got it in the last episode, and I started playing it since then. Uh, after I recorded, I played it for about an hour before I went to bed. Whoo, that game is addicting. It it's a, it's pretty much exactly what I expected, and uh, ex so far it's been pretty much exactly what I've been told it is, and I like it. I do. I really enjoy the game. Uh, it's repetitive. It is. And I don't blame people for disliking it for being repetitive, because it's very, very repetitive. It really is. But I like that kind of thing. Um, in that kind of way, anyways. It's like, a, it's a completionist-style game. Go into an area, do all the things, go to the next area, do all the things. It's all the same things, but it's do all the things. Um, they are progressively getting harder. Like, uh, okay, okay, um, the first section is Jeet's territory. I went through that entire thing, cleared it completely out, and then realized that I didn't use the sniper rifle once outside of that little tutorial section. I didn't kill you. How did you die? And, uh, so then when I get into the new area, uh, Gut Gash's area, Everything's harder. Like, noticeably harder. So now I have to use the sniper rifle. Okay, cool. That's actually pretty sweet. They are, they're making it harder, uh, but it's not just they're throwing uh, bad guys at you that are harder to defeat. Uh, they're stronger or they're, they're, you know, tougher or anything like that. They're actually being creative with output or outpost placement like uh, at the beginning of the game the outposts were relatively easy they were out in the open they were easily uh, scouted they were easily attacked that kind of thing but uh, the new outposts they're up on cliffs they're hidden in caves that kind of thing it's like somebody was actually thinking when they designed a uh, camp you know something that needs to be fortified and I like it. It's not completely and 100% repetitive. Again, I'm just emphasizing this. It is repetitive, but it's not crazy, totally, insanely repetitive like some really, really bad games that exist out there. But yeah, so I'm going to shut up about Mad Max for now because, well, this isn't Mad Max. This is nothing like Mad Max. And uh, 
I should probably save that and all my opinions on it and my rants on it if I ever do a uh, Let's Play in the game. And I really, really want to because I have some really interesting thoughts about the game. But like I said, I can't find Avalanche Studios monetization policy and I just don't risk it. I really don't. I mean, like I said, I probably could get away with it. I somehow doubt Avalanche Studios actually cares. Ooh, graveyard. Um, but, yeah, it's just I don't want to risk it. Uh, is there anything in graveyards? Like, if I dig down in front of these... Uh, yeah, like here, does it do anything? Whoa! Well, that would be a yes. <laughs> There's a coffin there. Uh, iron pipes. Boop. They actually collapse. Uh, books. And eh, what the hell. Get paper if I need it. Whoa. Yeah, update the blocks. Feathers. There are feathers in that guy's grave. Yeah, apparently all you have to do is update the blocks and, uh, things happen. Boop. There we go. Yeah, and everything collapses. Hmm. So, for robbing the grave, it's not as fruitful as uh, Bender would have led us to believe. Pump shotgun schematics set in concrete. Oh, hells yeah! Awesome! Sweet! Oh, thank you. God! Oh. <laughs> I was actually kind of worried I wasn't going to find it. Like, ever. Oh. Yes, we have concrete mix. I can start on the base. Ah. Oh. Yes, 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 uh. yes. Ooh, airplane day. Stay <laughs> 13. 13. Let's see, day seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it would be day 13. Uh, all right, so uh, let's go see what's in here. I need I need an SMG barrel. I have no idea what kind of ammo an SMG takes, thinking about it. Because, I mean, okay, so the 9mm takes 9mm bullets. Oh, I wonder if the, uh, the SMG takes the 10mm bullets that I found that I never actually associated a gun with. That would make sense. I think in video games, 10 millimeter bullets is the traditional ammo for an SMG. A submachine gun. I think. <sighs> it makes sense. Hopefully we can find out. We'll be even more American. Yes, I thought up the name of that episode after I recorded that episode. Because, uh, I don't know, it just kind of popped into my head and I figured I'd do one of those uh, ironic joke kind of things. Because, you know, stereotypically, Americans love their guns. And uh, they won't give it up for anything, even though it's <sighs> apparently killing us. Yes, it's... A hell, hell of a lot more complicated scenario than just take away guns, take away the problem. It's it's not that simple. As much as everybody else seems to think it is, it's not actually that simple. I wish it was. If it was that simple, I'd be totally supporting it. But it's not. It wouldn't solve the problem. Hmm. All right, so we are actually here for once. Well, I guess for twice, because we did this last time, didn't we? On the on the Day 7 episode. In the last episode, we were waiting for the crate to finish falling. Is it actually falling? It seems to be just kind of floating there. No, it's getting bigger just very, very slowly. Oh, hey, Shadow. Hmm. Alrighty. Is there anything around that I have to worry about? I haven't seen many zombies today. I mean, we killed one, so the server isn't accidentally on peaceful mode again, but... Yeah, I was playing... Uh, this is back when I just first started with uh, Seven Days to Die, and I created my first server. 
um, yeah, it was accidentally on peaceful mode, and I couldn't figure out what was going on for like two days. I'm like, why haven't I seen any zombies? I mean, I know they said that uh, there's not supposed to be any zombies spawning when the server first starts for a couple of minutes, but holy crap, it's been two in-game days. And then I found out it was on creative mode, which creative mode in Seven Days to Die doesn't seem to work anywhere near the same as creative mode in... I really like that. I will get that to that in a second. Yeah, in creative mode in Minecraft. Like, in creative mode in Minecraft, if you go into your inventory, you see, you know, where you can pick blocks and put them in your inventory. You don't get the crafting area. Seven Days to Die, creative mode just means that the zombies don't seem to bother you. But I haven't played with it too much, so I can't say for sure. No, uh, what I like about this, what I really, really like about this, the supply chest here, or the supply crate, is that when it landed, it was, you know, it was doing its rocking thing. And when it landed, it still slightly tilted this way. And it stayed that way. It didn't, like, right itself all of a sudden as it be turned from an entity into a block. If that's how it works, I actually don't know. Eh, sniper barrel, SMG parts. No, I need a barrel. And, of course, medication. All right, moving on. It's a tiny, tiny bit disappointing, but oh well. Worst things have happened, I think we'll be all right. So, yes. Uh, I saw a camp around here, didn't I? As we were running towards the chest, or towards the crate. So in theory, if I run back, I should see it again. I wonder if it's a camp that I already saw. Don't see it. Not yet, anyways. Where the hell are all the zombies? I'm gonna go home today, and there's gonna be, like, three hordes around. It's gonna be all 60 zombies. The, the default in the server settings for the maximum number of zombies that can be spawned at once is 60. You can change it, but uh, by default it's 60 to help with uh, server performance. So yeah, all 60 are going to be just staking out the house waiting for me. And they're all going to be dogs. Again. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, I don't see that camp anymore, and what the shit am I hearing? It, like, sounds like birds or eagles or something. I don't think I've ever heard birds in this game before. Zombies don't sound like that, and I'm quite sure that it's not in reality. I'm quite sure it's coming from my headphones. Whatever. Maybe it's just ambient noises that I never can fully hear. Because it is kind of quiet in my headphones right now. Wee. Alright, so I see two zombies. Have I explored this area yet? I don't know. I should start trashing some of this stuff. Ooh, three zombies. Was that guy always there? And I just totally didn't see him? Or did he just kind of magically appear? There's a guy in the roof. Come on. Twitchy mouse. I love the ones that are stuck in the roof. <laughs> They're hilarious. Because they can't move anywhere. They can't do anything. So they just kind of stand there. Come on. Come on. Alrighty. So. Is there anything else I have to worry about around here? There's this guy. I just suddenly realized I kind of didn't scout the perimeter properly before I started to explore, so. Okay. I don't see anything anymore. Car. Give me an engine, give me an engine, give me an engine. Make this a good day. I mean, yes, we have concrete. That's good, but... Auger blade. Don't we have one of these already? Hmm. Repair tool and oil. 
All right, those are okay. It was a big ass rock, but it was just a small stone. Hmm. Moldy backpack has shotgun sword stock and cano chili. Nothing in the medicine cabinet. Why does the tent have a glass window? This one does too. You know, is that normal? Because that just strikes me as very, very odd that these tents have glass windows. Pistol grip, cat food. Nothing else. I guess there's this guy. Ooh, 10 millimeter bullet, shotgun shells. Do I have a shotgun yet? I don't remember. There's a bug in my house. <laughs> Just felt it fly against my arm. That's going to annoy the shit out of me, I'm sure. Yes, I see Fat Boy up the hill. Ooh, another flashlight. Nice. This time, don't use it for my pistol. There's a backpack right there. Let's see what we can do about this guy. Of course, we can shoot him in the head like five times. There we go. Could use a crossbow schematic too. That would be nice. Uh, hunting rifle bolts, glass jars, shotgun barrel. I have one spot left in my inventory. Oh, but there's sand. I don't care about the sand. Do I want to grab this stuff? No, I don't think I want to grab that stuff at all. I hear you. Where are you? Hmm. Time's at 16.40. I hear somebody. Ah, there he is. He's a crawler stuck on the side of a hill. He is now a dead crawler stuck on the side of the hill. Oh shit, there was another one. There's also a house right there. I wonder if I've explored that yet. Yay! I'm also hoping that I find a cave. That would be nice too. But I have found nothing. Caves are really hard to find. They're super rare. But I kind of need them so I can actually do, you know, gun-related things. Hmm. All right, I guess we head home. Oop, I guess home's this way, huh? Ooh, bag. getting darker earlier? Because it kind of feels like it. Hmm. Uh, anyways. Squish. Squish. Must have run over a zombie. The noises that this game makes. Holy crap. Uh, so. What have we gun gotten accomplished today? Well, we got cement. We have access to cement now. So what I'll probably do in the for for the next day or two is just get uh, stone, like probably dig a mine and stuff like that, gather stone. Maybe if I'm lucky, get some iron, some wood, <sighs> more stamina. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, do all those things, gather up some stone, and then start working on. Uh, or we'll start working on the base. That way we have someplace safe to hang around. And uh, hopefully we can uh, go from there and get supplies. I wonder if we should bother finding a new place. Or if we should just do it out front where I've been. Hmm. I mean, I guess one good is as, or one place is good as another. It's like, it's like, uh... I don't know. It's it's one of those paradox question kind of things. What the, uh, should you or uh, 
yeah. If you know what your future is, is trying to prevent your future just what causes your future, that kind of thing. So I'm kind of curious. It's just, it's just Schrodinger's decision kind of thing. Should I stick around or should I leave? I guess the odds are all the same. If I stick around, well, I mean, I like chilling in the desert. The, je the desert is actually a pretty good place to chill. You can see a lot of things coming. Things are, you know, relatively flat because there's no trees around. There's a ready supply of easily obtainable food, the cacti. Uh, water is a little difficult to get, but once you get a source of water, you're set there. So that's not a biggie. Uh, wood. Wood is difficult to come by. You have to go find it. But if you get a lot of seeds, you can have some serious fun with that. Which I'm going to be using that trick later on in the series. Once I uh, build the base, or at least start building the base, I'll start doing that. Need a lot, a lot, a lot of seeds, though. So, yeah. Um, what else is there? I guess uh, we'll go home and... Uh, Got a lot of feathers. Yeah, I definitely need more iron so I can make more arrows. Because I have a lot, a lot, a lot of... A lot of feathers to make arrows with, which is good because I'm going to need a lot of arrows. I like killing things in this game. Very useful. So, oh, we're already home. Holy crap. Alrighty, I didn't even go that far, did I? Oy. We planned to go. Uh, planned to go to the big city, and uh, got very, very distracted. But, I mean, digging through the graveyard, we got that cement. That's very nice. I like it. These are just like solid stone, right? I'm sure as hell sound like stone. I think I've chopped into this thing before, and it just turned out to be stone. Hmm. It might be an idea to uh, replace my pickaxe with something a little bit more powerful. Boop. I'm going to need a lot of stone if I do what I plan on doing. Let's see. I need food. Boop, boop. That should be enough. There we go. All right, now I have stamina. So let's try this again. Uh, the joy of this game. The stamina thing is a little confusing, I guess. A little weird. There we go. Uh, yes, and that's the full-size stone that you can craft into small stones. Uh, eight of them, specifically, eight to one ratio. So, I will probably make all of these disappear. That'll get me a lot of stone. Because that's what I'm going to need. Um, should probably clear out the grass. Wish I had a lawnmower or something. Hmm. But yeah, clear out the grass so I can see crawlers coming in. And then, yeah, right here. Right here is where I'm going to build the new, with the, the new base. The new hideout. I guess we'll see how that turns out. It's going to be entertaining to build, I'll tell you that much. Uh, probably going to die a lot, considering what I plan on doing. And, uh, yeah, so I am going to go empty out my inventory from the uh, search. So I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Well, not tomorrow morning, I guess. Technically, I'm going around exploring for supplies. So I will see you guys in the next episode. And I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.